Grit that is found in wastewater consists of non-biodegradable particles that will settle faster than the biodegradable organic material that is found in the same wastewater. These non-biodegradable particles include sand, cinders, rocks, coffee grounds, cigarette filters, and other relatively non-putrescible organic and inorganic material. The grit removal process is a very important part of preliminary treatment since it removes debris that can cause damage to downstream equipment such as pumps as well as preventing the clogging of pipes. It also prevents the accumulation of inorganic, undigestible material in digesters, aeration tanks, and solids handling processes. Once the grit has been separated from the wastewater by settling, it's further processed to remove any organic material that may have settled and might cause odor problems. There are several different grit chamber designs that are in common use for grit removal, and these include manually and mechanically cleaned grit chambers, aerated grit chambers, and vortex grit chambers. Manually cleaned grit chambers are usually installed in small wastewater treatment plants that handle less than 1 mgd of flow. They consist of two flow paths that are basically wide points in the flow channel, which causes the flow velocity to drop to approximately one foot per second. This allows the heavier solids in the wastewater to settle out due to gravitational forces. If the flow is too low, the lighter weight organic material will also settle out, which will create grit handling problems. On the other hand, if flow is too high, the heavier grit will pass through this process and continue on into the primary treatment process. As flow increases, the operator may have both flow channels in service. As flow decreases, the operator may take one of the flow channels offline to try and maintain a flow velocity of approximately one foot per second. Manually clean grit chambers must be taken offline in order to perform the manual removal of the grit from the bottom of the chamber. Mechanically clean grit chambers also rely on gravitational forces to allow the grit to settle and come in various shapes. They might be rectangular, circular, or square. Most rectangular grit chambers have velocity control devices and a mechanical cleaning mechanism such as a chain and flight system. The chain and flight grit removal system scrapes the grit to a hopper where the grit is removed by grit pumps, screw conveyors, bucket elevators, or airlift pumps. Circular and square grit chambers have deflector baffles that distribute the influent flow equally across the unit. These units have circular collectors that scrape the grit to a central hopper where it's removed in the same manner previously described. Once the grit has been removed from the grit chamber, it goes into a classifier or washer that removes most of the water and organic material that was collected during the grit removal process. As with all mechanical equipment, the grit removal equipment must be regularly inspected and routinely maintained in order to ensure proper operation and long equipment life. Aerated grit chambers release compressed air in the grit chamber to cause the grit contained in the wastewater to move in a spiral motion at approximately one feet per second. This allows the grit to settle while the lighter weight organic material stays suspended and passes through to the primary clarifier. A vortex grit chamber relies on gravity for grit removal. The screened influent enters on a tangent and flows around the upper chamber due to natural hydraulic forces. Adjustable rotating paddles may augment the spiraling flow to create a mechanically induced vortex which settles the grit. The grid is then transported to the center opening of the fixed floor plate for collection in the lower chamber. The grit solids are removed from the lower chamber by an airlift or recessed impeller pump for further washing and dewatering. A bucket elevator system consists of buckets attached to a chain that scoops the grit from the grit chamber sump and removes it from the wastewater. This system must be monitored regularly to determine if the chain speed is appropriate for the volume of grit accumulated in the sump. If the buckets are full of grit, the chain speed should be increased or an additional grit channel should be placed in service. If there is very little grit in the buckets, 
the chain speed should be lowered or a grit channel should be taken out of service. Grit pumps utilize a vortex impeller that doesn't come in contact with the grit that it's conveying. This design helps to reduce impeller wear since it's not coming in contact with the abrasive grit. However, grit pumps are not without their issues. They may become clogged on the suction side from time to time, which requires reversing the pumping direction or blowing air into the pump. Some treatment plants have found it beneficial to install flushing connections on the suction and discharge side of the pumps to clear any blockage. Cyclone separators use centrifugal force in a cone-shaped unit to separate the organics and grit from the wastewater. A slurry of grit and organic material is pumped into the cyclone separator at a controlled rate near the top of the unit. It enters on a tangent which creates a vortex due to the flow velocity of the feed slurry. The grit falls into the grit washer while the water leaves the cyclone separator through the opening near the top of the unit and is returned to the treatment plant for further processing. There are no moving parts within the cyclone separator, therefore it relies on a steady flow of liquid for proper operation. Pressure plays a major part in proper operation as well and should be monitored regularly to ensure the grit slurry pressure and the cyclone pressure are within normal ranges. The purpose of a grit classifier is to remove organic material from the grit. There are two commonly used types of grit classifiers, which are the screw type and the reciprocating rake type. The grit enters the classifier and the heavier inorganic material settles to the screw or rake area where it is conveyed to a disposal bin while the lighter weight organic material is carried away by the flowing water and sent back to the treatment plant for further processing.